Quantum computing is undeniably cutting edge, but it can be an intimidating field to enter. But why is that? Well, it's not just about learning new terminology. It's about adopting an entirely new way of thinking on the quantum physics side. While classical computing feels more natural to us, quantum computing challenges us to rewire our thought processes because we just don't have that day-to-day -day experience with the quantum world. Quantum gates, unlike their classical counterparts, often just really defy our intuitive understanding. They're reversible, for example. And we don't have while loops in quantum. I've been in the space for almost 15 years, and some days I sit and I stare at a circuit or concept and think, wait, why does that work again? I know it does. I run the experiments in the lab, but it's still mind-bending. In this video, I'll explore some cool features of Q-Control's Black Opal platform. So Black Opal is an online interactive platform designed to bridge the gap to make quantum education accessible to all. Many of you may be wondering why quantum education needs improvement. It's because quantum is not like anything we've encountered before, and these traditional teaching methods often really fall short when it comes to explaining quantum concepts effectively. But that's where games and other learning experiences come in. It's more fun and memorable. Now, before we dive any deeper, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel to stay updated on the quantum journey. And don't forget to check the description below for a link to Black Opal. The first topic, which is about seven or so lessons from each module is free. And in the next video, we'll go through some of these lessons together and learn. So make sure to sign up and join me in the series talking about quantum education. It's gonna be fun. The traveling salesman problem, or TSP, is a classic optimization problem in computer science and mathematics. So this problem asks for the shortest possible route that visits each city exactly once and then returns to the original city. In Black Opal here, you can drag sliders to see different routes, and that can be incredibly useful for understanding the complexity of TSP. But you may look at this and think, well, this sounds like a little bit simple of a problem, right? Here on this image, you can probably tell what the fastest route would be, or at least, you know, close enough. You can visually inspect different routes and quickly find an optimal or near optimal solution. But here's the catch. The complexity of TSP grows factorially with the number of cities, so n factorial. So even with just 20 cities, there are approximately 2.43 times 10 to the 18th possible routes. This makes it computationally expensive and practically unsolvable with classical computers. But once we have quantum computers that are large enough, we could solve this problem much faster. And this problem extends beyond just a salesperson. TSP has applications in fields like logistics, manufacturing, and even DNA sequencing. Think about Amazon on deliveries. The same algorithm could be used for optimizing transport and logistic networks. For example, in automated manufacturing processes, the sequence in which tasks are performed can be optimized using TSP algorithms. And this is especially true for tasks like, for example, drilling holes in circuit boards or cutting materials. This also applies to robotics, so path planning for robots, especially in cluttered environments, can be modeled as a TSP. The robot needs to visit multiple points in the most efficient manner. It can also be used in network design. TSP can help in optimizing the layouts of cables and routing of signals to minimize cost and latency. Now, we see the potential of quantum computing to help solve many problems. So let's explore how quantum computing and learning actually really seamlessly integrate with casino games, which, you know, is maybe not the best use of quantum computing powers, unlike medicine, materials, and space, but it's sure fun. Quantum computing, with its foundation in quantum mechanics, is uniquely suited for understanding games of chance because it's all about probabilities, and that's the superpositions. So we can build our quantum intuition like this. Imagine flipping a coin, but not just any coin a quantum coin. This is precisely what we call the quantum penny flip. Quantum computing allows us to dive into the realm of probabilities in a way that classical computing just can't. The quantum penny flip experiment introduces you to quantum principles that underlie casino games, where outcomes are determined by probabilities and quantum states. How does it work? In the quantum penny flip, two participants, Alice and Bob, engage in a sequence of moves that resemble a classical coin toss. However, it comes with a quantum twist. Here's how it works. So first, Alice starts by placing a coin in a state of her choice, so either heads or tails on top, inside a box, completely concealing the coin state. And it's really important to note that even by touching the coin, it's impossible to determine which side is up because I know some of you will say this. Now, Bob reaches into the box and can flip the coin over or leave it as it is, and Alice can't see what Bob is doing. Alice then reaches into the box and can either flip the coin again or leave it unchanged. Finally, the coin is uncovered and the result is red. So that's pretty cool. In classical mechanics, you don't actually have any advantage, but Alice, who is armed with a knowledge of quantum physics, 
can perform quantum operations on the qubit. And this includes using a Hadamard gate, which is crucial for her winning strategy. So what is a Hadamard gate? It puts a qubit into a superposition. So when you apply a gate to that superposition, Bob's flip, which is an X gate, doesn't do anything. So in this version of the quantum coin toss, Alice's strategy is this. Whenever it's her turn, she applies the Hadamard gate to the qubit. Surprisingly, if she follows the strategy consistently, she always wins, regardless of Bob's actions. Now, I'm not saying that you should go to the casino after learning quantum computing, but the lottery game, quantum roulette, really anything that uses probability is great for learning quantum computing concepts. Next, let's visualize this a little more and practice with the block sphere. The block sphere is a powerful visual aid in understanding quantum states of qubits. And these are the fundamental building blocks of quantum computers. Imagine a sphere where every point on the surface represents a unique quantum state. A qubit, the fundamental unit of quantum information, is defined by having two energy states with a unique spacing between them. These two states can be represented as a zero and one of quantum computing, just like classical bits are represented as zeros and ones. However, in the quantum realm, qubits can exist in superposition states meaning a probability of those states. The block sphere provides an intuitive way to see what quantum states can do. It's a mathematical representation of quantum states. The north pole of the sphere corresponds to the classical state zero, while the south pole represents one. All other points on the sphere's surface represent superposition states, which are combinations or probabilities of zero and one. The ability to represent and manipulate these states is essential in quantum computing. Now let's dive into the race against the clock game, which leverages the block sphere to teach us about quantum states in an interactive and engaging way. In this game, you'll build quantum circuits to achieve specific state on the block sphere. The challenge is to add quantum gates to navigate your qubits to the desired point on the sphere. And each gate will do something different to the qubit's position. So are you ready to take on the challenge and race against the clock to master the block sphere and quantum states? Can you be my high score? If you're as fascinated by the quantum world as I am, it's time to take the next step. Next time, join me for a learn with me session where we're gonna dive deeper into the platform. So subscribe, like this video, and hit that link to get started with Black Opal. If you go check it out, you'll learn how researchers tackle issues like qubit stability, error correction, and hardware scalability. This is so important for not overhyping the technology and understanding the real limitations of systems today. Games are a great way to learn about quantum computing, and learning quantum computing, in my opinion, should be engaging to understand these steps. Artificial intelligence is the hottest new thing in technology right now, but my next guest says there's something else we should be paying attention to. Quantum computing.